What's up, everybody, and welcome back to OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry Chapter 1 Practice Test. Let's do it. So this one, we're meant to classify this as either rational, irrational, whole, or natural. So we want to go back and remember the categories. Now, of course, this is definitely a real number. So first it says, is it rational or irrational, right? And it's definitely rational because any number that can be represented as a ratio or a fraction of two integers, this could be represented as negative 13 over one. So we know that. Then the question is whether or not it's a whole number or a natural number. So let's talk about whole numbers. Whole numbers are all numbers that are zero, one, two, three, et cetera. All positive integers, including zero. Natural numbers are everything but zero, one, two, three, et cetera. So this is actually an integer. However, it doesn't give us that option to classify it as an integer. So the most descriptive one we can use here is rational. That is your answer. Boom, done. Here we're meant to evaluate the expression by plugging two in for x. So that semicolon kind of breaks it up. So I'm just going to replace the x with a two like so. And then I'm going to go order of operations. Two plus three in parentheses first is five. Two times five minus 12. Two times five next, which is 10 minus 12 is negative two. Boom, done. This is currently in scientific notation. We want to put it in standard notation. So the process is as follows. So I've got 10 to the sixth power to put it back. Since it's a positive exponent, I take my decimal and I move it six spots to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And these two empty spots get filled with zeros. So my final answer is 3,141,500. Boom, done. Now, when we simplify here, we're just talking about order of operations. So I'm going to look inside the parentheses first and see I have multiplication and addition. So we're going to tackle that multiplication first, which is three times two, which is six. So now I've rewritten it. Now let's go again. Parentheses two plus six gives me eight. Next, we're going to carry out the exponent. Eight squared is 64. Next is multiplication. Negative two times 64 is negative 128. And last but not least, we can finish the addition. Negative 128 plus 144 is positive 16. Boom, done. So here we're going to use our exponent rules, which says if two bases that are identical are multiplying, we can just add those exponents. So it becomes 3 to the 5 plus negative 3, which is, of course, 5 plus negative 3 is 2. And 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. Boom, done. Here we're going to simplify. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to square the bottom part. So 8 over x cubed over this squared. That's 2x times 2x, which gives us 4 x squared. Now I'm going to use my simplification methods. Again, 8 over 4 simplifies to 2 over 1, dividing them both by 4. And then x cubed over x squared, we're going to subtract those exponents. 3 minus 2 is, of course, 1. So we're left with 2x to the first, which is really the same as x, over 1, which I can simplify even further because I don't need the denominator and I don't need that 1. I can say 2x, boom, done. In this one, we're taking the square root of 441. Guess what? It's a perfect square. 441 is actually 21 times 21. So the square root of 441 is 21. Boom. Done. In order to simplify this one, I'm going to first break it up into two separate square roots, which is totally allowed. So I'm going to say square root of 9x over square root of 16. Then I'm going to take the bottom one first because this is a nice perfect square. The square root of 16 is 4. Then on top, 9 is a perfect square, so I can take the square root of 9, which is 3. That comes outside the radical, but what stays inside is the x, which is trapped. There's the winner. Done. In order to simplify this, we're going to have to extract as much as possible out of these radicals. So I'm going to rewrite them as follows. Okay, so this is a really nice way to frame it because now I can see there are perfect squares within each of these that I can take the square root of. So the square root of 4, for example, is 2. So that comes outside and is going to multiply the 6. Likewise, the square root of 9 is 3. And then that 6 stays trapped inside. So now I have 12 square root 6 plus 21 square root 6 minus 12 square root 6. And again, radicals are like variables. So now that they're all the same radical, I can combine these. These are all like terms. So 12 plus 21 is 33 rad 6 minus 12 rad 6. Again, 33 minus 12 gives us back to 21 rad 6. Boom. Done. Here, before we begin, we're going to go ahead and distribute this minus sign like so. 
So you'll notice that the negative three became a positive three, this flipped to a minus five and et cetera. Now we're going to combine like terms. So the negative three and the positive three cancel out. And then this two Q squared and six Q squared negative combine. So again, we're left with 13 Q cubed that has no like terms. These guys combine to a minus four Q squared, right? Two and negative six is negative four. Minus five Q for the win, done. Here what we're doing is we're foiling a binomial times a trinomial, so check it out. First I'm gonna multiply this guy across those. n times n squared is n cubed, minus four n times n is four n squared, and then n times four is four n. Now we're gonna have this one hit all three of those, and I'm gonna move it down by one, and you're gonna see it's gonna line up really nicely. So then I got negative two times n squared is negative two n squared, plus eight n, right, the minuses cancel out, minus Eight. And now I'm going to combine like terms. You can see it's lined up nicely. So negative 4n squared and negative 2n squared make negative 6n squared. That becomes positive 12n. 12n, excuse me, and that becomes minus 8 for the win. Done. Here what we're doing is we're factoring, and guess what? That's a difference of squares. So when we have a difference of squares, we note that this is possible because this is a perfect square, and that's a perfect square, and we're subtracting them. So what I do is I take the square root of 16x squared, which is 4x, and I place that here and here. Square root of 81, which is 9, I place that here and here, and then I alternate with the plus, minus, boom, done. Here we have a difference of cubes, so to factor a difference of cubes, if you remember this whole thing, it's called same, different, plus, and I'll show you what that means. So since this is a minus, that's the same, this is different, different from minus is a plus, and then this last one is always plus. Now what goes in here? So we take the cube root of each of these. A cube root of 27c cubed is 3c, right? 3c cubed is that. And the cube root of 1331 is actually 11. Now over here we get this first term squared. So 3c squared is 9c squared. Then we get these two multiplying each other, which is 33c in the middle. And then at the end we get this term squared, which is 121. And this is the final factored form done. Here we're going to simplify, but before we simplify, we start by factoring everything. So first I'm going to factor the upper left, and since we got a leading term with a 2, we're going to have to use the star method. So if you remember, the 2 goes up here, the a times c, which is 6, goes up here, and that b term of 7 goes down here. So then what multiplies to 6 and adds to 7? That's 6 and 1. This cancels like a fraction. It reduces to 1 over 3. So then we have 2z plus 1, and this is 1z plus 3 over, this is a difference of squares, so that becomes z plus 3 times z minus 3, right? Square root of each, and then a plus minus times. And then over here, we have to factor again. Once again, we got a leading coefficient, so we need to use the star method, so let's set it up here like so. We got 4 on the top left and top right. We got 4 times 9, which is 36 up top, and then negative 15 right here. What multiplies to 36 and adds to negative 15, that would be negative 12 and negative 3. I'm going to reduce this like a fraction that becomes 1 over negative 3. So now we have z minus 3 times 4z minus 3 over another difference of squares, right? Both of those are perfect squares. So the square root of 4z squared is 2z. The square root of 1 is just 1, and then we alternate with plus minus. Now for the fun part. We got a z plus 3 and a z plus 3. z minus 3, z minus 3. And a 2z plus 1 and a 2z plus 1. This leaves us with the final answer of 4z minus 3 over 2z minus 1. Boom. Done. Here we have to simplify, and to do that first we have to combine the numerator to have common denominators and merge. So I can make this denominator 2b and 9a if I multiply them against each other, which I'll do in a second, I'll get my nice common denominator. So this one we multiply by 9a and 9a, but 9a times a is 9a squared, so I'll just go ahead and write that. And then over here we multiply by 2b, and again, 2b times 2b, this whole thing is just gonna be squared. So I'll leave off the denominator for now and then I'll merge all of this so it becomes 9a squared minus 2b squared is 4, b squared, right, we're squaring the 2, over 
9a times 2b is 18ab over 3a minus 2b over 6a. Now, fraction dividing by a fraction is the same as the top fraction multiplying by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So this becomes 3a minus 2b here. We can kind of remove this piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some factoring because I can see some nice opportunities to cancel. So this is a beautiful difference of squares. So I'm going to go ahead and factor this as a nice difference of squares. We've got a 3a as a square root of 9a squared and a 2b as a square root of 4b squared. And then we alternate with a nice plus minus over 18ab times 6a over 3a minus 2b. And now you can see that we've got some good opportunities to cancel 3a minus 2b, 3a minus 2b. The 6 and the 18 goes to 3 and 1. And then of course we can cancel out one more a, boom. And now on top we have 1 times 3a plus 2b, which is just 3a plus 2b over 3b is all we have left, 3b. There's your final expression, done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button. And if you want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.